एनाटमी ऑफ ओरल कैविटी एनाटमी ओरल कैविटी एक्सटेंड फ्रॉम द लिप अप टू द लेवल ऑफ द एंटीरियर पिलर ऑफ द टॉन्सिल्स पेराटोग्लॉसल आर्च इट इज सब डिवाइडेड इन टू द वेस्टिब्यूल द एक्सटर्नल टू टीथ द ओरल कैविटी प्रॉपर इंटरनल टू टीथ Well, let's talk about the development, the upper lip formation. During the fourth week, fusion of the maxillary process with each medial nasal process takes place. This contributes to the lateral side of the upper lip, together with the medial nasal processes, which contribute to the medial aspect of the upper lip. The maxillary process also fuses with the lateral nasal processes, which is a nasolacrimal groove. Development of the palate involves the formation of the primary palate. a secondary palate and fusion of their processes the primary palate forms from an internal swelling of the internal maxillary premaxillary process fusion of the medial nasal process secondary palate forms from two lateral palatine processes developed as internal projections of the maxillary prominences now development of the tongue it begins at the four week weeks Localized proliferation of the mesenchyme results in the formation of the several swellings in the floor of the oral cavity. The oral part anterior to third develops from the fusion of the two distal tongue buds or lateral lingual swellings and a median tongue bud the tuberculum impar. The pharyngeal part of the root of the tongue posterior one third develops from the copula and the hypobranchial eminence from the second third and the fourth branchial arches. muscles of the tongue arise from the occipital somites which migrate into the tongue area the boundaries of the oral cavity the roof is formed from by the palate which separates the oral cavity from the nasal cavity whereas the floor is formed by the mylohyoid muscle which is mainly occupied by the tongue the lateral walls there are the cheek and the lateral molar trigon there are three openings of the major salivary glands the parotid the submandibular and the sublingual and numerous minor salivary glands example are the labial buccal palatal and the lingual when we talk of the contents of the oral cavity there are the lips starting from anteriorly the lips the palate hard and soft on the roof the cheeks laterally the floor of the mouth tongue and teeth now the palate hard palate hard palate is formed by the palatine process of the maxilla horizontal palates plates of the palatine bone some mucosa in the posterior half of the hard palate contains the minor salivary glands hard palate is covered by the keratinized epithelium now here we can see this is the incisive papilla this is the palatine raphe this is the palatine rub and this is the alveolus now comes the soft palate it is bound the boundaries between the hard and the soft palate is distinguished by change in color the soft palate is darker red and yellowish tint in relaxed position its oral surface is concave with a median raphe here is the uvula here you can see this is the palatoglossal fold this is the pal uh, palatopharyngeal fold palatoglossal and the palatopharyngeal fold this is the uvula So let's talk about the cheeks. The cheeks are covered externally by skin and internally by the mucous membrane, the buccal mucosa. Internally, the mucous mucosa adheres firmly with the buccinator muscle. The landmarks of the cheek, the parotid duct openings, may be visible. A whitish line, linear alveolar, may be seen at a position related to the occlusional plate of the teeth. Behind the molar teeth, fold of the mucosa. can be seen extending from the upper to the lower alveolus this fold covers the pterygo mandibular raphe that extends from the pterygoid hamulus to back of the mylohyoid line pterygo mandibular raphe gives attachment to the buccinator muscle entrance to the pterygo mandibular space lies lateral to the raphe between the cheeks or lips and teeth lies a slit like space known as a vestibule a sulcus is formed between the jaw and cheek Where the mucosa covering the alveolus reflects on the lips and cheek, known as the fornix vestibula. Behind third molar, a triangular space known as the retromolar tigron is there. 
lips lips are also covered externally by the skin and internally by the mucosa membrane this is a labial mucosa the muscles of the lip are the orbicularis oris muscle the vermilion protrudes externally in the midline to form the tubercle above which is a triangular groove region known as a philtrum floor of the mouth this is a small horseshoe shaped region beneath the tongue the muscle form the floor of the mouth is a mylohyoid so what here we can see this is the tip of the tongue this is a lingual frenulum lingual frenulum this is a sublingual papillae lingual frenulum sublingual papillae this is the sublingual fold this is the deep lingual and this is the fimbriated folds now if we talk about the oral mucosa it is classified into the masticatory mucosa the lining mucosa and the specialized gustatory mucosa the masticatory mucosa it covers the gingiva and the heart palate cratorized epithelium and has a dense fibrous lamina propria pink in color some mucosa is absent over the gingiva and palatine raphe but present over the rest of the heart palate lining mucosa it covers the internal surface of the lips cheeks floor of the mouth ventral surface of the tongue alveolar process red in color non cratorous stratified epithelium squamous epithelium whereas the masticatory mucosa is cratonized lining mucosa is non cratonized stratified squamous epithelium this is the gustatory mucosa covers the anterior two third of the tongue of the dorsum of the tongue vermilion of lip also known as specialized as it shares a feature of both lining and the masticatory mucosa the muscles of oral cavity there are three muscles of oral cavity the buccinator the mylohyoid and the geniohyoid this is the buccinator the muscle of the cheek it attach above and below to the outer surface of the alveolar process of maxilla and mandible by side of molar teeth maxilla this is the mandible this is the buccinator muscle what is the action it compresses the cheek assist the tongue in directing food in between the teeth nerve supply is the buccal branch of the facial nerve and artery supply is the buccal branch of the facial artery in the maxillary artery then comes the mylohyoid this is the mylohyoid muscle colored this is the main muscle forming the floor of the mouth immediately above is the geniohyoid muscle it is a flat triangular sheet origin is a mylohyoid line of the mandible it runs backward and medially insertion in front of the body of the hyoid near its lower border the action is elevates the floor of the mouth during the first stage of swallowing elevates hyoid bone and depresses the mandible when hyoid is fixed Nerve supply is the mylohyoid branch of the inferior alveolar nerve, and the arterial supply is the lingual artery, maxillary artery, and facial artery. As we told, there were three muscles: the maxillator, the mylohyoid, and the geniohyoid. So, third number is the geniohyoid. It is a narrow muscle, lies above the middle part of the mylohyoid. Origin is from the inferior genicular tubercle, runs backward and downwards. Insertion into the anterior surface of the body of the hyoid. The action, the action is the elevate. It elevates the hyoid bone and draws backward. Depresses the mandible when hyoid is fixed. Nerve supply of the genio hyoid is the hypoglossal nerve, and arterial supply is the lingual artery. Now, in this diagram, we can see this is the hard palate, the soft palate. This is the alveolar region. This is the upper lip, the lower lip. This is the body of the mandible. Uh, this is the tongue. this is the uh, genioglossus and below is the geniohyoid genioglossus the geniohyoid and below is the mylohyoid this is the hyoid bone and this is the epiglottis now the blood supply the arterial supply of the teeth palate and cheeks are mainly the maxillary artery terminal branch of the external carotid artery cheek buccal branch of the maxillary artery hard palate greater palatine artery branch of the third part of the maxillary artery soft palate is by the second and third lesser palatine arteries branch of the greater palatine artery 
venous drainage of the cheek is by the buccal veins pterygoid venous plexus in the infratemporal fossa lips inferior and superior labial vein facial vein the heart palate veins accompanies the arteries and drain into the pterygoid plexus well the lymphatic drainage mainly into the submental lymph nodes submental lymph nodes and the jugular digestive lymph nodes one need to remember that the cheek upper lips lateral part of the lower lips drain into the submental lymph nodes lower lip central part into the submental lymph nodes teeth into the submental lymph node of same side except the molars and the lower incisors because molars drain into the jugular digastric lymph node and lower incisor to the submental lymph nodes so one need to remember that lower lip and the lower incisor drain into the submental lymph nodes molar into the jugular digastric lymph nodes others like cheek upper lip lateral part of the lower lip all drain into the submandibular lymph nodes thank you